Hi, this is a walkthrough for creating an automatic outbound message via Loop Plus for your Salesforce.com account. If you become familiar with Loop Plus, you'll know that to create a DDP, you must first select a button on an object where you'll then be taken to a Visual Force page. Once you get to the Visual Force page, you must select a contact for delivery, a specific DDP, and then a delivery option, and then hit run. When creating an outbound message, you're essentially automating this entire process. So before we get started in creating the outbound message, it's important to note that the outbound messaging feature is not automatically included with your loop service. You must contact Draw Loop Technologies and have them add the outbound messaging feature to your license. This is because outbound messaging includes separate pricing from your loop license. Once Drawlip has added the outbound messaging feature to your DDP, you can begin to create your outbound message. So to automate the entire process, we'll need to create a field that identifies which contact to use, which DDP to use, and which delivery option to use. And the way we do that is we identify the IDs for the contact, ID for the DDP, an ID for the delivery option. So to do that, we must go to our record type object for the DDP and create a new field. Select view fields in the object app. And then once you're in the object setup, select new under custom fields and relationships. The data type is going to be a formula field. Once that's selected, choose next and choose text as the formula return type. The field label should start with draw loop space next. And the field name should auto populate with draw loop underscore next. If you want to create multiple outbound messages, all of your fields for the formulas must start with draw loop next. So if you create multiple outbound messages, it can include draw loop next two, draw loop next three, draw loop next four, etc. But they must start with draw loop next. Once you've labeled the field, select next, where you'll be taken to the editing interface for your formula field. In addition to choosing the IDs for your contact, DDP, and delivery option, you must identify the IDs of the records you're going to use. In this case, because we're using an account DDP, we're going to need to identify an account record. But we can do this using formulas to make it dynamic. So you'll start off by inserting a command that identifies the account ID. Type capital SF and then all lowercase account and append a colon to the command and close the quote. After you've done that, add an ampersand and insert a field for the account ID. You can do this for any object. You just need to type SF and then the API name of the object and then insert a formula to identify the ID for that record on the object. So moving on, once we've inserted the record ID, we must now identify a contact ID. We'll add an ampersand, start a quote, insert a semicolon, and then type capital SF, and then lowercase contact. and then append a colon to the end of contact and close the quote. Now the way we're going to do this is identify a contact via a lookup field on the account. And that lookup field is outbound message contact. As you can see, there's a lookup link to the contact Jane Smith, but we could change this contact at any time. We're gonna automate the DDB process by having the contact ID be selected from this field. So going back to the 
formula field, we'll need to insert an ID for that outbound message contact. So we'll scroll down to the outbound message contact field and then choose the contact ID for the outbound message contact and insert it into the formula. You must also remember to include ampersands after the Salesforce contact command and after the formula for the contact ID. Now another option that we have is to make the Salesforce contact static by physically inserting the ID of the contact after the Salesforce contact command. So if we want the contact to always be Jane Smith, we can simply take Jane Smith's ID, copy it, and paste it after the colon within the quotes for Salesforce contact. But because we want to automate this utilizing different contacts for each account record, we're going to use the outbound message contact ID. So after we identify a Salesforce contact, we must identify a DDP. So we need to insert a new command. Start a quote and insert a semicolon and then type capital DDP and then capital I lowercase d. Append a colon and then navigate to your DDP and physically copy the record ID for that DDP. Once you've copied the record ID, paste it into the formula field and close the quote. Next, we'll need to add an ID for the deployment. We'll add an ampersand, start a quote for the command, insert a semicolon and type capital D and then E-P-L-O-Y colon. Then once we've done that, we'll navigate to the deploy option, physically copy the deploy ID, and then paste it after the colon on the deployed command. And then we'll close the quote. If you need to identify other object record IDs, you can add the command to the formula field. Again, you just need to type SF and then the API name of the object. But once you've completed your formula field, select Next. Select Next after the field level security page loads. And then you can exclude them from your page layouts, but I'm going to include them so you can see how the field works. Then choose Save. And then navigate back to one of your object records. So this is the account record for Acme Company. Scrolling down, we can see our new draw of next field. We're identifying the account ID, which dynamically identifies the account ID that we're in. If you look at the ID after Salesforce account, it should match the ID in the URL after salesforce.com. Then we're identifying the contact. The way we set up the formula field, this contact ID must match the ID for Jane Smith. If you navigate to a, a contact record, you should be able to confirm the ID matches. After the Salesforce contact, we're identifying the DDP ID. So this would match the DDP that you want to use for the automatic outbound message. And then we are identifying an deploy ID. So all this information is sent with the outbound message, and we use this information to merge your fields into your documents. So once the draw loop next field is created, you can then create an outbound message using the draw loop next field. To do that, navigate to your setup. In the left nav bar, scroll down to create. Select the drop down for workflows and approvals, and choose the outbound messages link. Once you're taken to the list view, select New Outbound Message. Choose an object for the outbound message. In this case, we're using the account. And choose Next. Assign a name to your outbound message. The unique name will auto-populate. Then insert a value for your endpoint URL. It's important that you match the endpoint URL with what's in this video exactly. Type in HTTPS colon backslash backslash apps spelled A P P S 
dot draw loop spelled D R A W L O O P dot com backslash package spelled P A C K A G E backslash one one one. Once you've entered an endpoint URL, you can choose a user to send on behalf of. Select the lookup and you should see a list of users in your search results. Choose a user and that's who the outbound message will be sent on behalf of. Check the box next to send session ID. And then in the account fields to send options, include the draw loop next field in addition to the ID in the selected fields column. So you should be using both the account record ID and the draw loop next field. Once you've edited all the options for your outbound message, select save. The next step is to create a workflow to connect with the outbound message. In the left nav bar, select Workflow Rules. If you haven't already created a workflow, you can go ahead and select New Rule. Choose an object, select Next. Give the workflow rule a name, and then choose an evaluation rule. Your evaluation rules include when a record is created or when a record is edited and did not previously meet the rule criteria. Or you can choose only when a record is created. The third option is every time a record is created or edited. So once you choose an evaluate rule, move on to the next section. The next section is for the rule criteria. You must choose your criteria and continue. In this case, the workflow is going to trigger the outbound message every time a record is created or edited and the account currency is equal to USD. Once we select save and next, we can then add a workflow action. Since we've already created the outbound message, you can select existing action. From here, select the outbound message option in the search dropdown and add the outbound message that we've created to the right side under selected actions and choose save. Now we've successfully attached the outbound message to work in conjunction with the workflow rule. Now we can choose done and will be taken to the workflow editing page. You must remember to activate your workflow. Once activated, an outbound message will be triggered every time the workflow rule criteria is met. And that is how you add an automatic outbound message to your salesforce.com account using Loop Plus. Thank you.